Well, now the results are in. News 4 was the only local news to increase its share of viewers from one year ago. With the Go For It vibe starting to resonate, Channel 4 badly needed network help, and it got it from Brandon Tartikoff, who at the age of 31 in 1981 was named the youngest ever network entertainment president. <laughs> NBC was dead last when Tartikoff premiered Hill Street Blues, starring Daniel Trevanti as Captain Frank Ferrillo. I put my butt on the line for 12 years for this department. Hill Street Blues drew 50 to 20 million viewers every Thursday night. It won eight Emmys in 1981. Let's be careful out here. Tartikoff, he was young, he was brash, he was brilliant. Uh, and, and NBC needed him at that time. He was the right man at the right time, and, and, and he came through. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. Here's the premise. It's a bar in Boston with a former Red Sox pitcher who owns it, and it's all the characters coming out of the bar. And you go to yourself, that sounds terrible. But it all depends on who's cast in the role. And that show made stars out of Ted Danson and Shay Long and, and uh, that, whole, that whole great cast. You like to laugh? <laughs> I love to laugh. How did you know? Call it a hunch. <laughs> the great ones make it look so easy. <laughs> Tartikoff charted a whole new course for NBC. It all started with Hill Street Blues, and then they started adding other shows, and, it, and, and eventually it was must-see TV on Thursday nights. Tartikoff coming to NBC, that was a game changer. It, it gave us great lead-ins. We had poured lead-ins into our news, and people underestimate what a lead-in can do. So that gave Mort Krim and the news team here a better shot at getting an audience. Tartikoff spun out Family Ties, featuring a 20-year-old Michael J. Fox. So tell me, Alex, do you know many emotionally disturbed people? Ah, uh, just family. <laughs> Uh, Dad, I think I'm uh, a little old to be sent to my room. You're also too old to be whining in the car the whole way back. I wasn't whining. <laughs> in 1984, Miami Vice began dominating Friday nights. Crockett and Tubbs and shoot 'em ups in Armani suits were busting drug cartels and prostitution rings. You're making a big mistake, pal. The show ran for five seasons before it and its handsome stars said goodbye to the show and to each other. I'm gonna miss you, man. I'm gonna miss you too, Sonny. They give you a ride to the airport. Why not? Mom, make sure Dad behaves. Please, okay? How do I look, Mom? You look great. Yeah. Hello, Mrs. and Miss... Hello, doc, Doctor... Hel hello, Mr. <laughs> See what you did? A lot of people... Um, in the white community could not believe that was possible. They thought it was fiction that you could have a, two professionals, a, a black doctor, and, a, uh, and, and two people who like, had a family that was well-dressed and, and polite. And it, it, was, it was groundbreaking and it was image-shattering at the same time. And it was funny. That's the bottom line. All, none of that would have mattered if the show hadn't been funny. You gonna drive or should I? <laughs> The Cosby Show was the number one rated TV program for four consecutive years. But when Tartikoff left in 91, he quickly answered the question. All-time favorite show that you brought to the small screen? Certainly Hill Street Blues. It was sort of the yeah. seed from which the whole network grew. And from those humble beginnings, it grew into the most honored show in the history of the Emmys uh, for, for a dramatic television show. As Tartikoff created some solid network franchises, back home, Channel 4 built a few of their own. Well, scary fans, what can I say? These boys here assured me that this movie was going to be a scary thriller. The only thing that was scary was the plot. In 82, Detroit radio personality Tom Ryan and WDIV producer Tom Delisle 
created Count Scary to host movies. Channel 4 bought this 3D movie, Gorilla at Large. Tom and I were huge fans of a Channel 9 show, SCTV. They had a character on that show called Count Floyd. He would say, <laughs> Oh, that's going to be a scary film. So I said, let's call the character Count Scary. Now listen to me. Grill at Large was a horrible movie. Most of our movies were horrible. When we had that huge rating from the first show, and they said, whoa, we got something on our hands here. What are you going to have? Nancy Delisle, which was married, she was married to Tom, and she's very pretty and very funny. Right down the street from Channel 4, I don't know if it's even still here, there was a little Coney Island there, sitting there, and she comes up, as she's the server, and she says, hey, Count. Want to dance? And I said yes, and we pressed the button on the boombox. You want to dance? Well, let's fly! Oh, hey, Nancy, this isn't some cheap TV trick. <laughs> We're really flying! Look down there, they're putting another ticket on the Scotty Mobile! Channel 4 hired a plane, a helicopter. A gust of wind came by, and the helicopter dropped about 30 feet instantly, and the guy said, I thought we were going to die. And I couldn't wait to get off that building. We did a lot of Count Scary stuff. Prime time, late night, we put it everywhere. We ran it as much as we could, yeah. Here I am driving in June to the good old beach. And here I am looking cool. Oh, <laughs> and now, here's the guy who gave us the best moment of the year, Kirk Gibson. Hi, Kirk. As long as you're here, maybe you could help me with my batting. Let's, let's well, turn it around the right way first, too. Gotta be this way. That's right. Oh, like well, ready? Fire that in there. He had a bat, and we had a wiffle ball. So he picks up this wiffle ball, and he hits it so hard. This wiffle ball hits a cameraman right in the head. People were not afraid to make fun of ourselves. The station could take chances um, because they were moving up in the in the ratings and not taking themselves too seriously. <laughs> we did a number of shows with Dick Purton. It was great fun, and it helped the brand of Channel 4. No one else was doing anything like it. Okay, enough of the radio guys, okay? On our last show, this 22-year-old secretary went all the way. Tonight, three of America's most talented performers compete for the chance to go up against our current champion from the home of the hits, Motor City, USA. This is the Saturday Night Music Machine. And now, here's your host, Curtis Ganson. We were trying to do a platform that gave singers and performers you know, a way to, to get exposure uh, uh, locally that would extend nationally. Decades before American Idol and The Voice, like this, someone had to lose. Channel 4 created the Saturday Night Music Machine. Tested number three, La Sway. We gave a lot of people, you know, uh, a good platform to start. And that, that's what was important about it, is it, it just exposed a lot of people's talent. The station was clearly on the move, with a white tornado in the wings. 